Hi everybody! I hope you're doing really well. I have a little visitor who's hanging out with me today who's in the middle of trying to chew my computer cord. She's being really smart, huh? Come here. So, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. So Gracie is here and she's helping me get my work done. <laughs> and so she was, oh, she's shy. See, she's tucking her head. She said that she would read you today. She would read you chapter four. And, um, but I told her, no, that you guys didn't understand how to speak dog. And so that that wouldn't work out very well. So, yeah. <laughs> but she says hi. And there's her. Yeah, okay. <laughs> All right, you guys. Let's get into the book. Sorry, Gracie, go lay down. She's actually been really good. We've been getting a lot of dog training done. Okay, so remember, his homework assignment was to find out where all the words came from, right? So chapter four is called Word Detective. It was a beautiful September afternoon. Bright sun, cool breeze, blue sky, but not for Nick. Nick had to do a little report for the next day, plus copy <clears throat> copy out all the definitions for 35 words for Mrs. Granger. This was not the way school was supposed to work, not for Nick. There was a rule at Nick's house, homework first. Anybody else have that rule? And that meant right after school. Nick had heard his older brother James groan and grumble about this rule for years, right up until he graduated from high school two years ago. And then James wrote home from college after his first semester and said, my grades are looking great because when I came here, I already knew how to put first things first. That letter was proof Nick's mom and dad had been looking for. Homework first was the law from September to June. This had never bothered Nick before because he hardly had any homework. Oh, sure, he might look over his spelling words on Thursday nights, and there have been a few short book reports in fourth grade. But other than that, nothing. Up until now, schoolwork never spilled into his free time. Well, thanks to Mrs. Granger, those days were gone. And here's an illustration for you. Make sure I get it in there, not too close. Look at his face. Woo! It doesn't look too happy, does he? First, he looked up the definitions in the brand new red dictionary that his mom had bought, because Miss Granger told her to. It took almost an hour. He could hear a baseball game in John's yard down the street, yelling and shouting, and every few minutes the sharp crack of a bat connecting with a pitch. But he had a report to do for Mrs. Granger. Nick looked at the very front of the dictionary. There was an introduction to the book called Words and Their Origins. Perfect, Nick thought. It was just what he needed to do his report. It would all be over in a few minutes. Nick could already feel the sun and the breeze on his face as he ran outside to play. Homework all done. You think it's going to be that easy? Then he read the first sentence from the introduction. Without question, this modern American dictionary is one of the most surprisingly complex and profound documents ever to be created, for it embodies unparalleled entomological detail, reflecting not only superb lexi lexicographic scholarship, but also the dreams and speech and imaginative talents of millions of people over thousands of years. For every person who has ever spoken or written in English has had a hand in its making. What? Nick scratched his head and read it again. And then again. Not much better. It was sort of like trying to read the ingredients on a shampoo bottle. He slammed the dictionary shut and walked downstairs. Nick's family did a lot of reading, so bookshelves covered three of the four walls in the family room. There were two sets of encyclopedias. The black set was for the grown-ups, and the red set was for the kids. Nick pulled out the D volume of the red set and looked up dictionary. There were three full pages with headings like early dictionaries, word detectives, and dictionaries today. 
We know about headings, don't we? Not very exciting, but Nick had to do it. So Nick just plopped down on the couch and read all of it. And when he was finished with the kids' book, he opened up the black encyclopedia and read most of what it had, most of what it said about dictionaries too. He only understood about half of what he read. He leaned back on the couch and covered his eyes with his arm, trying to imagine himself giving a report on all this boring stuff. He'd be lucky to have three minutes worth. But because Nick was Nick, he suddenly had an idea and it brought a grin to his face. Nick decided that giving this report could actually be fun. He could make it into something special. After all, Miss Granger had asked for it. Hmm, interesting. I think he might be up to something. What do you think? Hmm, we'll find out soon.